Hello everybody. Today I'm going to do the Algebra 2 Unit 4 review with you guys. Okay, so let's just get started here. So number one says describe the transformations needed to obtain the graph of g of x from its parent function f of x equals 2 to the x power. So <clears throat> this is our exponential function. 2 is the base of it. So since the 2 is the base of the parent function, that's not a transformation, okay? Everything else is. So it looks like we have 1, 2, 3, 4 transformations, okay? Remember, the negative is its own transformation. You can't think of it as negative 5. You've got to think of this as a negative and then a 5, okay? So the negative is a reflection over the x-axis. The 5 is a vertical, it's either a stretch or a shrink. It's a stretch because it's greater than 1. So vertical stretch by 5. Remember, the what's ever up with the exponent tells you if you go left or right. If it's x plus a number, it's to the left. So left 1. And then this number tells you if you go up or down. And that's positive 9, so we go up 9. Okay? Study your transformations. All right, next it says for the exponential function, give the domain, range, whether the function increases or decreases, the horizontal asymptote, and the y-intercept. So if we get out our graphing calculators, let's plug this into our y equals screen. So y equals 5 times parenthesis 1 half to the x power. Okay, <clears throat> let's hit graph. Okay, so let's talk about, oh, sorry, I'm going to move this over here, left handed. All right, so the domain of this function, remember that's your x values. So I read the graph from left to right. So as I go from the left, which it, this continues all the way on to the left, to the right, it goes from negative to positive infinity. <clears throat> the range is your y values. You want to read it from the bottom to the top. So my lowest y value, it looks like it like kind of starts right at like zero. So it goes from zero, that's where I start from the bottom, <clears throat> up towards positive infinity. <clears throat> and remember, we put a parenthesis on the zero because it does not equal zero. It just gets close to it. So as I trace my graph, my pencil's going down, so the graph's decreasing. My horizontal asymptote is always y equals a number. And again, that's at zero because the graph approaches zero but never t um, touches or crosses through zero. So y equals zero. And then the y-intercept, we can get that from the table of values, hit second graph. And the y-intercept is when x is zero. So this would be zero, five would be the y-intercept, okay? <clears throat> Alrighty. Next, um, number three says, write each exponential statement as a logarithmic statement and each logarithmic statement as an exponential statement. A couple different ways you guys can do this. Um, if your teacher used the Bay method, use that. If you use the swoop method, use that. Um, but it does not matter which one you use. I'm going to do the swoop on this first one. So this is five my exponent would be 2 equals 25. You just follow your numbers, okay? And this needs to logically make sense. 5 squared is 25, okay? <clears throat> oh, whoops, let's do letter C real quick. So this base is 2. 2 to the power of negative 1 equals 1 half. Again, 2 to the negative first is 1 half. That logically makes sense, okay? If it does not logically make sense, then you did something wrong. All right, letter B, this is an exponential form, so we need to write it in logarithmic. So I have my base, or I have log. The base of the exponential form is the base of the log of 27 equals 3. Again, if you want to use the swoop method here, we start with this 3. The next number, if I follow my arrows, 27 equals the final number, which is 3. And 3 to the third is 27. You can work backwards and check yourself. So letter D is log base 9 of 1 over 81 equals negative 2. 
Yep. Okay. So you will have to rewrite uh, these on a test tomorrow, okay? All right. Number four says solve for x. So here we're just asking you to figure out what the exponent, what the exponent needs to be in order for this to be um, equal this side, okay? So four to what power gives you 64? To the third, okay? Um, 10 to what power equals one over 1,000? Now remember, if your number is all of a sudden in the denominator, we do know that it's going to be negative, okay? A negative exponent moves that um, to the the denominator, right? So basically now just ask yourself, 10 to what power equals 1,000? And that would be 3, because I have three zeros, okay? Letter C, um, e to what power equals e? So we need this to equal the same thing, so that means I'm going to raise it to the first power. Anything to the first power equals itself. Over here, this is a special one. Anything raised to this certain number always equals one. That is zero, okay? You gotta make sure you guys know that. Anything raised to the zero power always equals one, okay? And then over here, I have two to what power equals 1 16th? So x equals, I know it's gonna be negative because my two is all of a sudden in the denominator. Two to what power equals 16? 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. I multiplied it by itself 4 times, so it's negative 4. Okay? All right, number 5. It says write the expression as a common log, then use your calculator to evaluate to three decimal places. So you're using the um, change of base formula, so it's going to be log 13 over log 6. A way to remember that is like the little base guy always goes in the bottom, base bottom, okay? So, what do we get here? Log, where's it at? Log 13 divided by log 6. 1.43, I gotta do three decimals, so instead of a one, I'm gonna raise it to a two because there's a five after it. Okay? All right, letter B. I get log of 3.5 over log of 4. So log of 3.5 divided by log of 4. 0 0.904 because after that 3 is a 6, so we want to bump that up. 5 and up, bump it up, right? Okay, on to the back. Okay, using log properties, rewrite the expression as a single logarithm. Then evaluate your simplified logarithm, show all of your work, okay? Here's the log properties over here. This will be given to you tomorrow on your test. So you, you don't have to memorize this. This will be written off to the side just like it is here. So using my log properties, I need to rewrite this as a single log. These are the single logs. I need to see it in this form, okay? So it looks like I have a number out in front of this log. When I have a number out in front, remember that becomes the exponent on you, okay? So I'm gonna move this two, and we move this two as well. So I get log base two of 12 squared minus log base two of six squared. Now let's figure out what 12 squared is. So 12 squared equals 144. So log base two of 144 minus log base two of six squared is 36. Okay, now I have <clears throat> logs of the same base that are being subtracted. When I subtract, I'm going to rewrite it using division. So this becomes log base 2 of 144 over 36. Okay, see where the u is and see where the v is. You just write the word log one time. So, this gives me log base 2 of 144 divided by 36 is 4. So now I have a single log because I only have the word log written one time. That's the single logarithm, okay? Then it says evaluate your simplified logarithm. So now I have to evaluate this. So I'm going to write log base 2 of 4 and set it equal to x. <clears throat> and then to evaluate it, you want to rewrite it in exponential form. So 2 to the x power equals 4. So 2 to what power will give you 4? 2 squared equals 4. Okay? 
All right, let's try another one. Letter B. Um, oh, it looks like I have a power that I can move. I have a number out in front that I can move there. So this is log 100 plus log 10 squared. So I'm going to simplify what 10 squared is. So log 100 plus log 10 squared is 100. So I'm going to rewrite that. All right, now that I'm adding, I multiply u and v together, right? So I multiply 100 times 100. Log of 100 times 100, which is 10,000. So log of 10,000. And I have a single log, so that's it. That's my single logarithm. All right, now I got to go evaluate it. So write log of 10,000 equals x and write it in exponential form. What's the base of this log? It would be 10, because remember, if there's no number written there, it, we just it's known to be a 10. So 10 to what power equals 10,000? <clears> remember, if you're doing 10 to a power of a power of um, some sort of 10, you can count the zeros, so that's four. Okay? Alrighty, number seven, expand each using the properties of logs. So expanding means we want something that looks like this side, okay? So we're gonna like have the plus, minus, or our exponents are going to move in front of the log. So here, um, we the u and the v are being multiplied, okay? We'll take care of the power last, but let's rewrite this. This is um, multiplication, so we're gonna separate it using addition. So this becomes log base six of u to the 20th plus log base six of v to the fifth. Now that we have um, <clears throat> taken care of the multiplication property, we are going to use the powers and rewrite these exponents out in front of the logs. So I'm going to move that 20 out in front and the 5 out in front of the v term, okay? So 20 log base 6 whoops, of u plus 5 log base 6 of v. And there's nothing else you can do there. Okay? Notice I rewrote the bases. You've got to keep the bases the same. All right, letter B. This is division, so you separate division using subtraction. So the natural log of x minus the natural log of y to the fourth. And when you have a power, you move it out in front of the log. So that guy's going to go right there. It only goes in front of the um, log term with y because it's on the y. It does not go in front of the x term. Okay. So natural log of x minus 4, natural log of y. All righty. Now we're going to... Okay, now we're going to get into solving exponential equations. Make sure you show all your work and to round your answer to three decimal places. Okay, so looking at number eight, we need to find where the exponent is, which is right here. And we need to make sure that the base of it, this is four, is by itself on one side of the equal sign, which it is. So once I'm in that form, I can go ahead and rewrite this in logarithmic form because I got to get the x out of the exponent. So this would be log base four of 1 equals 2x plus 3. Then we solve for x. So this uh, I'm going to subtract both sides by 3. So I get log base 4 of 1. And I'm going to write this minus 3 out in front just to make sure. Remember, you don't subtract 3 from the 1. You're subtracting it from the entire log. Equals 2x. Now i got to get x by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by 2. And I'm going to go ahead and type this into my calculator. Now, some of you guys have like the log base um, feature. Some of you don't. I'm just going to use the uh, change base formula in case you don't. Um, so this would be, I'm going to do log of 1 divided by log of, whoops, sorry. Log of 1, got to close your parentheses, divided by log of 4. That's this part. That's the change of base that like what we did on number five on the front. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to subtract three from that. All divided by two. Which gives me x equals negative 1.5. Okay. 
Alrighty. Number nine. Here's my exponent, there's my base, so I need to get that term by itself, so I need to move this negative five over, so the opposite would be to add five. e to the x minus one equals five plus five is 10. And then I need to, now that I have the exponent by itself, I need to rewrite this in, in uh, logarithmic form. So log base e of 10 equals x minus one. If you want, log base e, remember, is just natural log. So you can rewrite that if you want. You don't have to. And then to get x by itself, I'm going to add 1 to both sides. So I'm going to type in the natural log of 10. Close my parentheses. Plus 1 equals x equals 3.303. Because that 5 will bump that 2 up to a 3. Okay. A couple more here. Number 10. Here's my exponent. Uh, the exponential form is already by itself on one side of the equal sign, so I'm good to rewrite this in logarithmic form. So log base 4, 256 equals 4 minus 5x. Um, I need to move this 4 to the other side, so minus 4, minus 4. So I get negative 4 plus log base 4, 256 equals negative 5x. The 4 has to be negative, and this log is positive. That's why I wrote it like that. And then I'm going to divide both sides by negative 5. So x equals, let's type that in. So I'm going to rewrite this log. Let's change base formula. So log of 256 divided by log of 4 minus 4 divided by negative 5, which is 0. Okay. And then number 11 here. Here's my exponent, there's the base, so I need to get that term by itself. This is two times all of this. So opposite of multiplication is division, so I'm going to divide both sides by two. So four to the x plus two equals 128 divided by two is 64. Now that I have this term by itself on one side of the equal sign, I can rewrite this as a log. So log base four is 64 equals x plus two. And then to get x by itself, I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. So x equals negative 2 plus log base 4 of 64. So if I type that in, let's see, log of 64, close my parentheses, divided by log of 4, minus 2, which is 1. Okay. Alrighty, and last but not least, we have solving logarithmic expressions, and we're going to round our answer to three decimal places, showing all of our work. Remember to check for extraneous solution. Remember, you cannot have a negative number inside a log. That's a no-no. You also cannot have zero inside of log. That's a no-no. If Whatever you get x to equal and you plug it back into the log and it equals a negative or zero, that would mean it's extraneous, okay? So let's knock out these four problems here. So we got to first get the log by itself. Here's my log term, okay? I need to get that by itself on one side of the equal sign. So I need to get rid of this 2. So the 2 is being multiplied, which means I'm going to divide by 2. So log base 2 of x plus 2 equals 5. And then now we're going to do the opposite of what we just did to get x out of a log, we're going to rewrite it in exponential form. So this would be 2 to the fifth equals x plus 2. 2 to the fifth is 32 equals x plus 2. And then to get x by itself, we're going to subtract 2 from both sides. Whoops, I should say minus 2. My bad. So 32 minus 2 is 30 equals x. So now that we know what x equals, we're going to plug it back in. 30 plus 2 is 32, which is positive, so I don't need to worry about extraneous there. I am good. Okay? All right, number 13. I have a log equals a log. This is base 10, and this also has a base 10. Remember, if there's no number there, it's just base 10. So because the logs are the same, or the bases are the same of each log and they're equal to each other, that means we can set the insides equal to each other. So negative 2a plus 9 equals 7 minus 4a. I'm going to combine my like terms. Um, I'm going to add 4a to both sides. 
It doesn't matter if you want to add 2a to both sides, it does not matter. So 4 minus 2 is 2a plus 9 equals 7. Those ones cancel. I'm going to combine these two constants together. So subtract 9 from both sides. 2a equals negative 2. And then divide by 2. So a equals negative 1. So let's make sure this works. Negative 2 times negative 1 is 2. 2 plus 9 is 11, so I'm good there. Negative 4 times negative 1 is 4. 7 plus 4 is 11, so again, I am good. So this works. I don't have to worry about it being extraneous. Okay, number 14. Down here, here's my log term, so I need to get it by itself. Looks like I need to get rid of this 2 first, so I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. So negative 6 natural log of x equals 8. Um, again, here's my log term, so I'm going to divide by negative 6 to get rid of that guy. So natural log of x is negative 4 thirds. And we're going to rewrite this in exponential form now because I have the log by itself. Remember, the base of ln is e. If you need to rewrite this like that, you can. You don't have to. So this would be e to the negative 4 thirds equals x. So you guys can just type that in your calculator. e to the negative 4 thirds is 0 0.263, but because there's 5 after that, I'm going to bump that up to a 4. And if I plug this in for x right here, that's a positive number. You're not doing anything with it there, so it stays positive, so I'm good. All right, last problem here. I have two logs that are being added to each other equal to a number. So whenever I see logs being added, I need to think about the log properties that are at the top of your paper. So to rewrite this as a single log, when we add logs in the same base, we are going to multiply the insides. So this will be log base 5 of x times 2x minus 9 equals 1. So I'm going to distribute this x to both those terms. So log base 5 of 2x squared minus 9x whoops, equals 1. Now that I have a single log on one side of the equal sign, I'm going to rewrite this in, log, or in exponential form. So 5 to the first equals 2x squared minus 9x. 5 to the first is just 5. And because I have an x squared and x term, this, this x squared means I have a quadratic, so I'm going to get this set equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides and get 2x squared minus 9x minus 5 equals 0. And then you can factor that. So I have no GCF. I can't divide these all by 2 or anything. So I now have 2x and x. And then, let's see here, let's try a 5 here and a 1. Factors of 5 are 5 and 1. This gives me 1x. This gives me, whoo, run out of space, 10x. I can add and subtract 10x and 1x to get negative 9. Negative 10 plus 1. So plus, minus. 1 times negative 5 is negative 5. Okay, so now that I have my factors, you set them both equal to 0. So 2x plus 1 equals 0 and x minus 5 equals 0, and solve both of those little equations for x. So minus 1, 2x equals negative 1, divide by 2. x equals negative 1 half. Over here I'm going to add 5, so x equals 5. All right, let's plug those back in to make sure they work. If I take this negative 1 half and plug it in for x, I'm not doing any other operation there. That means this log is negative on the inside, so that does not work. What about the 5? If I plug in a 5, it stays positive, I'm good. 2 times 5 is 10. 10 minus 9 is 1, which is positive, so I'm good. That works, and only this one is extraneous. Make sure to label extraneous on your quiz, okay? All right, that is it. If you guys have any questions, please reach out to your teacher for some help. All right, see you guys.